Hey guys, welcome to Woods Tree Farm. I'm Phil and today we are going to do a big upgrade on our irrigation setup. If you followed us for any length of time, you've probably seen our other setup, which is a seven horsepower Duromax pump with a two inch uh, pump on it and it's a two inch inlet, two inch outlet, but it is a trash pump and a trash pump is not made to do pressure. I've never put a pressure gauge on this, so I don't know what kind of pressure it does put out, but some people have said it's in the neighborhood of 15 to 20, maybe up to 25 PSI, but that is it. These pumps are made for moving, moving liquid, moving water, and they're also capable of moving trash and debris up to like five eighths of an inch. So uh, because of the way the impeller is set up in these pumps because it can move solids through it it doesn't build pressure and uh, that is I think holding me back from making the most of our overhead irrigation here so I was at our local tractor supply the other day they had this pump which is a pacer pump with a five horsepower Honda GC I think yeah GC 160 engine on it and uh, anyway, the short story with this is that it wasn't in its box and all the other pumps that they had in stock were in a box. And that was kind of like, hmm, what's going on with that? So I inspected as much as I could, uh, you know, the pump to see if it had fuel in it, if it had oil in it, if it was used previously. I didn't see anything like that, but I did notice that it didn't have the right manual with it. It actually had this manual for a Red Lion pump. So I went and asked the store manager about it and she just kind of went, yeah, I guess it, you know, it got put out here with the wrong manual. If I had to guess, it was probably a return and they didn't have the original manual with it and they just tried to find something. Anyway, it, what happened doesn't really matter. So I said, hey, I'm interested in this pump, but you know, could you give me a few dollars off? And she just came right out and said, yeah, I'll give you a hundred dollars off, which is about 20%. And um, so I said, yeah, uh, I'll take it. And then when I get it here, I realize, yeah, the pump probably was returned because I couldn't for the life of me get this thing to run. And I tinkered with it for the last hour and a half. I took the whole air filter off, the carburetor off. And what I found out is that there was something wrong with linkage between the throttle and the carburetor where it just, you know, your throttle input wasn't really doing anything. So I kind of disconnected everything, reconnected everything and figured out kind of how to make it work. And I'd say it's still not perfect, but I can get the pump to run now. But getting the throttle adjustment is actually a little wonky right now. But anyway, it runs. It runs well. This pump says it should do up to 50 PSI, which should be a noticeable uh, increase in output at the sprinkler head. So what I wanted to do in today's video was do a comparison of each of these sprinklers with a single uh, inch and a half overhead sprinkler. I have a second one, but I'm actually going to do a test uh, probably in the next day or two running these pumps in... Um, or not but these pumps, but running the new pump with two of these uh, inch and a half sprinklers to see how well it can push its pressure through two sprinkler heads. If you wanna see that video, you're gonna to have to check that out on my other channel on Flat Creek Outdoors. So go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well if you don't already. And I'll leave a video, uh, link to that channel in this video's description. So here's the pump we've been using. That is a Duro Max. We've had this now for over two years and I bought it secondhand. I don't know how much use it had before I had it, but this has been a phenomenal pump. It has needed absolutely nothing from me in terms of maintenance other than oil changes. I haven't changed the air filter. I haven't changed the spark plug and I've left this thing out all year long in the weather and it has never let me down, knock on wood. So I am completely pleased with this pump from a reliability standpoint and it can absolutely move a good volume of water. It just doesn't build pressure, like I said. So there's the specs on that pump. It says it can do 158 gallons per minute. It has a 92 foot max uh, lift delivery, two inch inputs, two inch output, and uh, it runs at 3600 RPM. So I've got the sprinkler set up. It's actually way up there. You can't really see it from here, but I'm going to cut the old pump on first. I'm going to take a stick out or two stakes actually, and we're going to pound these into the ground at the maximum distance where that sprinkler shoots out at full throttle on the old pump. And then we're going to do the same thing on the new pump and we're going to see how much of a difference it is. All right, so I just walked the whole length of the hose. I'm coming up to the sprinkler now and just wanted to make sure there's no major kinks or bends. 
or anything in the lay flat hose that might take away from the sprinkler's output. And you can see here, there it goes. <clears throat> it's still working on getting a little bit of air out of the line. But what we'll do, I'm just gonna go basically along one of these rows of Christmas trees right here, and I am going to let it come around for two revolutions. I'll put one of these sticks in the ground, and then we'll measure how far it is. So the farther one was 48 feet from the sprinkler head and the shorter one was five feet shorter than that, 43 feet. So uh, I'm gonna let this come back around and see where this next rotation falls. Yeah, that was maybe a foot shorter than the 48. So I think this is skewing a little bit longer. There's not a lot of wind today really moving this water around. So I think that's about what we can expect, which I've been running this sprinkler like this for several weeks now. And I generally will uh, pace off about 15 paces to the end of, uh, uh, to the end of where the sprinkler shoots out. So for me, and I have you know reasonably long legs, that's about 45 feet or so. So this seems right in line with, with what I've seen all the other times that I've run this pump. I took the tape out now to 100 feet. So I have hooked up this pump before I cut on the camera. I know it shoots farther than this one. I don't know how much, which is why we're doing the tape measure thing. So uh, let me go switch pumps fire it up see how it does so this pump is the se2ulesshoc model pump they should have come up with a longer name for that you can probably tell it is obviously shooting farther than the other one did I've already put one stake in the ground I'm waiting for it to come back around at the tape measure and I'll put another one in but the other thing maybe you can tell in the video but it's dropping water a lot more evenly across its path which is how these sprinklers are supposed to work they call these rain guns for a reason because they're supposed to shoot out oh let me come back Yeah, like I was saying, these rain guns are supposed to distribute water out across their path. It's not just supposed to shoot it out and drop all the water out on the end of its trajectory, which is kind of what it was doing when it was operating under lower pressure with the trash pump. I had to really dial in the sprinkler head, which there's an adjustment on the end, uh, to try to disrupt the stream enough so that it would cast out a nice, clean, um, you know, kind of rainfall rather than just shooting everything out to the end of its path. So now it's dropping water across most of its path and what it's not getting close to the sprinkler, that's what the other side is supposed to do. There is a smaller stream over there that's even more disrupted and it gets a shorter distance closer to the sprinkler. So I think it's pretty well tuned in now and I have two stakes in the ground. You're probably curious how much further and I'm just gonna wait for this to go by. Well, that time is actually a little shorter, but there's a little bit of breeze blowing right now that wasn't blowing a few minutes ago. Uh, but it, anyway, the, the two that I put in there were at 70 and 68 feet. That one that just came through was, was a couple feet shorter, so maybe around 65, 66. So compared to where we were at before, between 43 and 48, this is a, a considerable improvement over where we were before. So in terms of like actual square footage, you know, it's not just that extra uh, 20 feet or so, or 22, 23 feet. It's 22 or 23 feet over this entire circle, which is a massive amount of square footage. So the other thing that that means is that in order to get water down over this larger area, we're gonna have to let it run longer. 
But that's okay because we were spending a lot of time previously moving our, our sprinkler every hour or hour and a half or so. So if I can get this to run like that and let it run for two hours or whatever the, the gas tank's capacity is, and then uh, if I can get a second sprinkler to run in series with this one and cover an even larger area, uh, I'm fine letting it run for two or three hours and not moving it because there's so much more area being covered at once and I'm not spending a bunch of time moving sprinklers around. So last year I made this irrigation calculator and now that we actually have internet at the farm, I can pull it up here because it's a, a web-based thing. And there's other irrigation calculators available on the internet, but I'm a geek that way. I wanted to make my own. But uh, just to give you a sense of the difference here of, of the coverage. So a 48 foot radius is equivalent to about 7,200 square feet or 0.16 acres. So that's what the old pump was doing, a 48 foot radius or 0.16 acres at a time. Its circle was covering 0.16 acres. If you extend that radius 20 feet to 68 feet, it is now 14,526 square feet or over a third of an acre. Actually, it's exactly a third, 0.333. Uh, so you go from um, that, that extra 20 foot in distance is actually twice as much square footage. So you can kind of see here that like as far as what we're trying to do here in um, irrigating as much of this field as possible and getting as much water down in as short a period as possible, these big sprinklers I think are doing a really good job of that. If you want to check out the uh, irrigation calculator that I put together, I'll drop a link to that in this video's description. Well, thanks for spending a little time with me today. Be sure to check out the Flat Creek Outdoors channel as well. In a couple days, I'm gonna do a test with this same pump and see if it can power two of these sprinklers. And if it does power two of these sprinklers, how does that impact the distance and the coverage and all that stuff? So that'll be fun. Be sure to check that out. Thanks for checking us out today. I'm gonna wrap us up. Have a great one. I'll see you on the next video.